Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, obviously you can tell by the title, I want to jump into this whole debate argument conversation as to whether or not content consumption counts as a hobby and whether there's any gray area there. And I feel like the conversation is starting to come up a lot because it seems like in place of hobbies, quite a few of us, myself included sometimes, we tend to just consume hours worth of content. And obviously as someone who's on both sides of the argument as a creator and a consumer, I wanted to give my perspective because sometimes I feel like my hobbies got away from me in the recent times. And also just talk about beyond, okay, is, do we have hobbies? Do we don't have hobbies? What happens if we don't have hobbies? What are some things that this can manifest or extend into? So let's go ahead and get into it. It's a hot topic now that even across age groups, people seem to have less hobbies and that in place of a hobby, a lot of us just consume hours worth of content. I'm sure y'all have seen the Spell Pharaoh video, but if not. I think we place way too much emphasis on looks when it comes to building confidence because some of you guys have not read a book in years, don't know how to do your taxes, have no sense of identity outside of the internet, and can't speak in public, and yet every morning, there you are looking at yourself in your full-length Ikea mirror going, you're so hot, you're the prettiest girl in the world. Okay, and? Even if that were true, and let's be honest, who cares? Spell Pharaoh. Tell me what the FTC does. Name a single hobby of yours outside of media consumption. People reacted to that differently, saying, oh, she made me get back into a hobby I haven't been into for years, or like, girl, you don't even know what you're talking about. But this hobby's discourse, as we'll call it, is definitely on people's minds. I think the biggest gray area or point of contention is over whether media consumption is a hobby. And in my personal opinion, the answer to that question could be both yes or no. Because I can't sit here and say that reading can't be a hobby or watching a certain type of film or something of that nature. I think the creator of that video later clarified they meant social media, which is what a lot of us would call content now, and not just media in general. But even there, I do feel like there's still a bit of gray area. Because outside of books, movies, or more traditional media, a lot of the so-called content that I consume is related to a hobby of mine. That way I can learn more about it or hear other people's perspectives on that topic. Obviously music, pop culture, history, a lot of things like that. A difference I can see on the type of content consumption being counted as a hobby is the intentionality behind it. For example, I don't know if I would necessarily count blindly scrolling my For You page or my Twitter feed as a hobby. But like I said, I think you can use those apps as a vehicle to learn more information about your hobby, new techniques, etc. Another dichotomy in the hobby discourse is creation versus consumption. I feel like we tend to think if you're creating something in your leisure time, that leans more towards a hobby. And if you're merely consuming, that's not necessarily a hobby. And this isn't a new conversation, surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly. One article I read written by Marco Kramar back in 2018 was very much of the opinion that content consumption isn't a hobby. The article was based around a question a friend asked him, the question being, okay, okay, but what can you create? In what way does your creativity get manifested? And Marco said that question made him realize that consuming content and often consuming just the output of other people's hobbies basically doesn't really count as having one of your own, he writes. The problem arises when consuming content becomes the exclusive way of spending our free time and when we are presenting these kind of activities as our hobbies. In my case, often a need for inspiration, I've consumed enormous amounts of content. I've watched Silicon Valley to inspire me for making a mobile app. After four seasons, there is no app. So not saying consuming content is bad or abnormal, but it's not the same as having a hobby and in some cases can dupe us into thinking we're moving closer to our goals with our own hobbies or life in general when we're just continuing to consume. And while I don't know if I can completely agree with this, I still enjoy the question that the article raises. Is something only a hobby if it results in some creative product or a product in general? Let's make a case for those who say no, not all hobbies result in a product being made. A lot of hobbies related to consuming media, like books or movies, for example, do still lend themselves to so-called productive conversations or discourse, even if you don't have anything tangible to show for it. Like say you love A Song of Ice and Fire or something because I do, so we're gonna use that example. I feel like the intangible product of that hobby could be as simple as walking away with a new theory about something or a better understanding of a piece of text from the books or a scene from one of the shows. And hey, maybe if that conversation was happening over a forum, that is the tangible product in a sense. I just don't know if I can agree that, for example, film can't be a proper hobby of someone's if they don't make films or make film-related content themselves. 
But still, if someone tells me their hobby is film, my assumption is never that they're just rotting in front of the TV all day watching whatever happens to come on. And maybe that's more so in terms of media because it's created to be watched or consumed, unlike crocheting or something. But still, if bird watching, for example, is your hobby, you could be so educated on it and not necessarily have anything creative come from it. I feel like there's going to be so many different opinions on this, so if you have one, do feel free to share it. I feel like something else important to break down if we're going to make these blanket statements that people don't have hobbies anymore, people have less hobbies, is why. And I feel like obviously one of the aspects to it, aside from social media, because while social media does make problems, I don't necessarily agree that, oh, no one has hobbies anymore just because of social media. There are other factors. And I think one of them is definitely financial aspect, because a lot of hobbies that people might have do require equipment that you have to buy. Like, for example, if you want to get into pottery, you probably got to pay to have access to a wheel definitely have access to a kiln or something of that nature. But not every hobby is expensive. Comparatively, some are way more affordable than others. Months ago, I came across articles about the rise of granny hobbies or grandpa hobbies, especially when it comes to millennials and Gen Z. And I've seen a lot of people express excitement that they now have a granny hobby, so to speak. This refers to relatively inexpensive, often craft or domestic related hobbies like crocheting, knitting, baking, even gardening, things of the like. Newsweek interviewed a woman named Sam, who's 27, about baking becoming one of her granny hobbies. And she claimed, I think people are doing more of these hobbies because they save money and they're hands-on and productive. There is fatigue from all the social media and technology, so people are craving activities that create something in the real world. I also read an NBC article from about two years ago saying these granny hobbies were simultaneously influenced by social media as they developed into certain aesthetics. According to them, the coastal grandma aesthetic popularized people wanting to be in their so-called grandma era, which translated to participation activities like crocheting or canning. Around mid-2020, going into 2021, I remember cottagecore being very popular, one because we were all at home or in our yards if we had them, so related activities like baking and gardening, similar to the coastal grandma actually, were pretty popular. Something the NBC article points out is that different to a lot of past generations, many of us are learning these granny hobbies online or from peers rather than from a grandparent. And I think part of the reason a lot of us don't learn these hobbies from our grandparents, if we're fortunate enough to have or be close to them, is time. A lot of our grandparents still work, or we work, or both of us work, which can make it difficult to dedicate time to learning a new skill, even if we can't afford it. And I see a lot of people my age lamenting that they don't have the time or are too burnt out to enjoy a hobby they used to love or pick up something new. I think this is also where those jokes about girl rotting or rotting in bed on your phone come from too. It's almost like revenge sleep procrastination, where as a form of time reclamation and self-care, you do absolutely nothing rather than going on that run or crocheting that blanket. Because you've already been working all day likely, and when you're overworked, things meant to be done in leisure can still feel like work. And that can also be in conjunction with mental things like stress, anxiety, and maybe even depression. And beyond adults or people who are working, I feel like the time aspect can negatively impact kids developing hobbies too. For example, as somebody who frequents craft stores and has for years, I've noticed that maker spaces where crafting lessons are taught are way, way emptier than they were when I was a child. And it's not because all kids everywhere hate crafting because really that's not true. But if you're 10 and you want to go to a painting class and you don't have anyone with the free time to take you or maybe the money to pay, then you can't go. And that could extend to any hobby, really, whether it's picking up a sport or instrument or learning a new language. And so now I want to address another piece of viral content that you may have seen. The original post, I believe, was deleted, but essentially the creator was making fun of another for talking about picking up skateboarding and taking lessons. Listen, I don't have too much that I believe in, but I met this guy the other day and he said he took a skateboarding class as an adult. And I was like, okay, that should be illegal. That should be illegal. I'm sorry, a bunch of men in their late 20s and early 30s, people, not men, anyone, that age range, learning how to skate by a teacher. People came out in droves, and I'm going to add myself to the number, saying that no one's ever too old to learn a hobby, and often adults pick up hobbies they always wanted to, but couldn't pursue earlier for whatever reasons. I also saw the point, which I very much do agree with, is that picking up hobbies, especially as an adult, is really a way to create community because it is a lot harder to make friends as an adult. And a lot of us adults, and even teenagers, kids, I would argue, say that we're lonelier than ever nowadays. And it's so much easier to make buddies with somebody if you guys are united around a similar interest or if you're both learning something new together because it's easy to bond with someone that way. And I feel like the lack thereof of hobbies potentially could tie into people's longing for third places. And not to say that 
that every single third place is related to a hobby, but quite a few of them are. And I feel like I and probably other people are at the point where it's like, oh, if I'm going to spend $30, $40, $50 at the club on some cheap cocktails and like a night out that's not even that fun, would it not be more worth it to spend that same amount of money on like dues for a club, like an activity-based club that is related to my hobby and is going to teach me something new and maybe connect me with people who are more willing to talk and converse with me? And that creator's judgment over the man learning to skateboard reminded me of like a few months ago when I was talking about the concept of cringe and how posting about your hobbies online, even if you are trying to find community through that posting, it can open you up to a lot of the judgments, a lot of the unwarranted criticisms often just from people online who may not even be related to that hobby or in that subculture that you're trying to build community within. Also in this conversation of hobbies, especially ones that require materials, is this idea of overconsumption. Like, can something be a hobby if consumption is at its core? Is it a problem if your hobby requires a lot of consumption? Questions of the like. Collections are a big example, and I'm really intrigued by this topic because I don't fully know where I stand or where I for sure think a collection stops and over-consuming or hoarding begins. In response to the Stanley Cup craze, there was discourse that people have the tendency to consume in place of an identity or hobby in hopes of it becoming a shortcut to that same sense of fulfillment. On one hand, I can understand the perspective that collecting Stanley Cups makes no sense because the point is to have one, that way you're not using a bunch of containers. But you could argue at least I could use all 20 of my Stanley Cups, even if it's unlikely, but if I collect rocks, for example, what use would I have for those? A difference I can personally see is maybe the reason you began the collection or the motivation behind collecting, like whether it's for a sentimental or spontaneous reason versus just trying to keep up with a trend that went viral. I've also seen people say what makes something a collection and the hobby part of it is the actual time spent hunting for the items, the actual curation of them, not just going to one place and buying all the colors and quantity that you want. And for example, I had a quarter collection as a kid, like where you try and collect one from all 50 states. And because I was a kid back when people still use cash and change pretty often, I was able to make the collection organically. I don't have it anymore. I honestly spent all those shits by middle school. But say if I just went online and bought quarters from all 50 states, put them in my book and called it a day, does that make it less of a collection or is it still a collection? And even if it is, does it no longer count as a hobby? Interested to hear your thoughts on this also. So now I want to revisit the coastal grandma aesthetic and the idea of aesthetics as a whole. There's a whole bunch of discourse now about how people, especially younger people, are trying to form their identities and trying to do so by applying these aesthetics to themselves be it the mob wife, the coastal grandma, eclectic grandpa, whatever, any of the above. And since these aesthetics can have specific clothing styles and accessories related to them, now often marketed through social media, people try to chase an aesthetic or identity through consumption rather than lived experience or an interest in that subculture beyond aesthetic. Certain hobbies can create an entire community or even a subculture, and in turn that can inform how you present yourself or how you create your quote unquote aesthetic. By taking the hobbies out of it or trying to create the identity through consumption rather than experience, it's like working backwards. And it's maybe why that aesthetic doesn't feel as authentic or fulfilling, because it's not tied to any genuine interest or the way you live your life day to day, so then you chase that next aesthetic, thinking the heart of the problem is that you're really an office siren and not a coconut girl. And also a lot of the times when we bring these hobbies to social media because of the judgment, there can be a need, even if the hobby is genuine, to overperform and present yourself as the archetype of someone who enjoys that hobby, lest you be called a poser. Because to be honest, in several cases, there actually isn't a specific way that a person who enjoys or participates in a specific thing looks. I have seen people bring up the aspect that while they may have a hobby, it's hard for it to feel like an escape or feel low stakes because there's this pressure to turn your hobby into a side hustle, which is very real in our capitalist hellscape. And so it can be hard to stay in that mindset of creating or contributing just for the sake of it rather than any higher purpose than pure enjoyment. I was trying to think of media depictions of people without hobbies, and though I have not seen Succession, that example came up a lot, so y'all will have to confirm that one for me. I was going to make a joke and be like, wow, without hobbies, we'd be like the Kins in the Barbie movie. And they kind of made a point about how useless the Kins were because they weren't as accomplished as Barbies and had nothing to do really. But then I was like, wait, Barbie has a bunch of jobs and Ken actually does have a hobby. It's just like beach or surfing, I guess. And then I was like, does Barbie canonically have hobbies outside of the thousands of jobs she has? And apparently Barbie's hobby is shopping or more so fashion and just learning about and catching up on the latest trends. Personally, whenever I think of somebody in media who has a hobby, it's always going to be Miss Raven Baxter and her passion for fashion. And I was thinking more about people who don't have hobbies in media. This gym. This gym. I dropped out in the fourth grade. 
to run drugs to support my nano. That means you haven't known the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of high school football. Personally, I'm glad that I got back into my hobbies because I realized I was having maybe a bit of a problem when every other sentence I started when talking to somebody, you know, face to face was like, oh, I saw a TikTok that said this. I read a tweet that said that. Of course, it's going to come up in conversation. But when I say that was basically the only thing I had to bring up or talk about, I was like, I need to reassess what I'm doing with my life. Something I've never really thought about until recently is that just engaging in hobbies, it does give you more of a sense of control over your life because it's like, yeah, I'm responsible for my own algorithm or what have you, but that doesn't mean I can control what posts I see next when I'm scrolling down my explore page, for you page, and then extending that to your, to like real life, so to speak, it's like maybe you can't move out of that house immediately. Maybe you can't quit that job immediately. But in your little bits of free time, wherever you get it, you can actually choose what you want to create, what you want to participate in, what you want to engage in. Back in 2016, the Houston Press published an article titled, Your Entertainment Choices Aren't Your Identity. I really thought it would tie more into the idea that you can't put the cart before the horse or the aesthetic before the hobby or the lifestyle and give a take on that before it became the hot topic that it is now. But I feel like it fits in more with the parasocialism aspect because the article discusses how it is so important to have a hobby and that entertainment related interests are not inherently bad, but overly consuming one thing is detrimental and consumes your identity likely without you consciously realizing. And I have to share this paragraph because it is so well written. The author Jeff Rauner writes, Mass consumption of things also tends to bestow an unearned sense of expertise on the consumable. To stick with the geek subjects, playing hours of video games or reading stacks of comics goes from being a diversion to being an investment in your personal worth. It has to be for something, and it's exactly where gatekeeping comes from. All this does is up the ante on how much a person has traded his own sense of self for shares in something he doesn't truly own, only consumed. If what's being consumed has a history of being marketed towards a specific and fairly homogenous demographic, it gets even worse, dragging tribalism and othering into the conversation. Consumption becomes a resource to be protected against invaders. I, and I'm sure a lot of you guys see this a lot online, typically in regards to a specific pop star or artist, because that is similar to a lot of the content I consume, where a fan will cash in their time spent consuming something in exchange for authority, when that's not always an even exchange. And again, we come back to this point, as Rounder quotes in his article, how much of your time is spent consuming things other people have made, TV, music, video games, or websites, versus making your own? Only one of those adds to your value as a human being. And like I have already pointed out, I'm just not sure how much I can agree with this and maybe I'm taking it too literally too black and white because I do think in several cases there are books that I've read, films that I've watched, even a quote that I've read. So obviously I consume that, that was way more valuable, that changed my life in a more positive way than something that I might have created. And then also, I'm sure everyone has made at least one or a few things in their life, but not everybody wants to identify as a creator, nor does everybody have to. And I also do think in a sense, in a lot of aspects, to be a decent, to be a talented creator, you do have to be somewhat of a good consumer. Like for example, the best authors, the best writers are the people who consume or read a lot of books because they're getting the practice, because they're learning the conventions. And so once they do that, they're able to take the training wheels off and show us their own work and their own creativity. And as always, I am just, I feel like there's gonna be some arguments in the comments, some debates, hopefully some healthy debates. I'm so eager to hear your thoughts. Like, do you think content consumption is a hobby or are you kind of like, it could be in some instances, but just laying on the bed, just scrolling, 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 maybe you wouldn't necessarily count that. And then more generally, what are your thoughts? What makes a hobby? Is it something that has to be actively done where a product is made? I have something to show you, like, here's my hobby. Here's what I did. Here's the result. Or do you think it can be something that is quote unquote passive, i.e., I don't know why I said i.e. out loud. I've never done that before. But like, in a sense, nothing is made nothing tangible is produced but i walked away with some knowledge with some insight but of course as always no matter where you fall in the conversation on the spectrum drop your comments and your opinions down below that way we can chat as we always do as always thank you so much for watching be sure to like comment and subscribe so that you can stick around for more also make sure you follow me on twitter if you want to keep up with me there and if you'd like to become a channel member and get early access to videos the link is in the description again thank you so much for watching i love you all so very much and we'll see you so very soon Bye bye